you, you can't live off of rice, you know? I'm sure a lot of Filipinos would disagree. And Hello and welcome back to Asia Now. My name is Alex and in this video I'll tell you about the World Health Organization declaring a global emergency. Cambodia sees a 22% increase in tourism. Acts of kindness saved an Australian man's life in Thailand. What is considered food poverty in the Philippines? A Malaysian man arrested in Palawan for illegal fishing. Plus more beginning with our exchange rate. One USD right now equal to 56.95 Filipino pesos. Let's move into our main story. But first, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Here's our top story. The World Health Organization declared a monkeypox and pox outbreak in Congo and elsewhere in Africa, a global emergency on Wednesday with cases confirmed amongst children and adults in more than a dozen countries and a new form of the virus spreading. Few vaccine doses are available on the continent oh come on man not again i don't want to i don't want to go through all this again one <laughs> one pandemic was enough i really hope they get this under control i have zero information i'm not a doctor i don't know if you guys are curious about this whole mpox monkey pox business spreading world emergency uh yeah look that up by yourself because uh, i'm just too stressed out already just thinking about it. Next up, a 33-year-old South Korean man, Park Seo Ki, who was wanted for telecommunication fraud in Seoul, has been arrested in the Philippines and will be deported. Park was apprehended by the Bureau of Immigration following a deportation order issued due to his status as an undesirable alien. He had been evading arrest for years after fleeing to the Philippines. Park is accused of being part of the syndicate involved in voice phishing scams in Korea. His passport has been canceled, making him an undocumented alien, and he is currently detained awaiting deportation. Another foreigner being caught in the Philippines uh, for doing some things he shouldn't be doing. I guess he's going to be leaving and blacklisted from the Philippines. And then James Lothian, a 41-year-old Australian FIFO worker from Perth, was severely injured in a car crash in Thailand while on vacation with his family. He spent five months in intensive care battling life-threatening injuries and complications, including septicemia. A Lothian required six pints of rare negative O blood, which was provided by Australian expats in Thailand. Despite successful surgery, his recovery is ongoing with a significant weight loss and his inability to eat or drink since May. His family has launched a GoFundMe campaign to cover escalating medical expenses and they are working to bring him back to Australia for better medical care. Oh wow, so uh, I guess he's still struggling, this poor guy from Australia. You know, I have to admit something that's really bad. I don't even know what my blood type is. I have, I, I don't even know when I went to the doctor last. Next, the National Economic and Development Authority of the Philippines stated that Filipinos who spent around 64 pesos a day for three meals or about 21 pesos per meal are not considered food poor under the current poverty metrics. The threshold which has increased from 55 pesos a day in 2021. NEDA Secretary Arsenio Balsican acknowledged that the threshold is outdated and needs revisiting as it doesn't align with current living costs, especially given high rice inflation. However, Balsican emphasized that the threshold is used as a consistent metric to monitor poverty. He clarified that the metric is different from a criteria used by other government agencies such as the Department of Social Welfare and so on and so forth. I don't know which departments these are or which senator or which kind of metric they're using, but just living in the Philippines and knowing that 60 four pesos uh it's not that much money it's just over a dollar basically to live on three different meals you, you can't live off of rice you know i'm sure a lot of filipinos would disagree and filipinos love rice but all jokes aside you need protein you need dairy you need all that stuff to have a healthy lifestyle and there's no way you're going to be able to survive in the philippines at least in my opinion for a dollar a day essentially i think that threshold needs to be revisited and definitely adjusted you to reflect the actual cost of living in the Philippines. Leave your thoughts down below. What do you think of that? The, the government or this whatever agency thinks the 64 peso is not considered poor a day. Moving on to Cambodia, Cambodia's aviation sector is experiencing a significant uptick in the first half of 2024, with the country's three international airports handling a combined 3 million, well, 3.03 million air passengers from January to June, up 22% from 2.48 million recorded in the same period last year. Good for Cambodia. I wonder how many of those are local tourists or local travelers and how many are international visitors. Next up, maritime authorities have arrested two Malaysian nationals and 18 others over illegal fishing in the waters of Balabak, Palawan. Yeah, so don't be doing no illegal fishing because they'll catch you. After Japan, Tokyo, a hundred of Japanese flights and trains were canceled Thursday in the middle of a major holiday week as another typhoon roared towards the archipelago. Japan is probably one of the worst countries actually to be in regarding natural disasters, though those guys experience a whole bunch of stuff uh, annually. 
Staying in Japan, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced this morning that he will not run for a leadership of the Liberal Democratic Party, preparing the ground for his resignation after months of scandals. The latest related to the funds raised illegally by some party members. Traditionally, the leader of the major party is chosen by the Prime Minister. So I guess that guy's stepping down soon. In Pakistan, Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid, former head of the Inter-Service Intelligence, Pakistani's notoriously spy agency has been arrested for charges of abuse of power and other offenses. In India, Indian doctors are protesting in several cities across the country after the body of a 31-year-old trainee was found in Kolkata last week. According to the autopsy, the victim was great before it was disposed. The protests have provided doctors an opportunity to seek out against their... Yeah, India, historically, if you even remotely watch the news, they got some serious cases when it comes to violence against women. I hope that some of these protests have a positive impact. Turkmenistan recently banned forced employment of minors in the cotton industry. Instead, before the new school year starts, it has conscripted teachers and students to go into the fields together with soldiers and state employees upon threat of dismissal since it cannot give up the main source of state revenue after gas and oil. Going back to Thailand, a Bangkok condo owner faces a 120,000 baht renovation bill after tenant thrashes or trashes the rental unit. Wow, these images are unbelievable. Can you just, can you imagine? How could somebody live like this, man? It's unbelievable. Staying in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, a local bus driver condemned for kicking locals off for foreigners, a Thai woman took to the social media to condemn the wrongful behavior of bot bus driver in Chiang Mai after the driver kicked her off the vehicle to accommodate a group of foreigners. However, the foreigners declined the driver's service. The 63-year-old victim, Sri, shared a bot bus incident on Facebook groups in Chiang Mai on August 13th. She posted a picture of the video of the bot bus with a caption that read, quote, everyone should definitely avoid this red bot bus. The driver kicked me off mid-journey to pick up foreigners, hoping to get more money from them. A uh, series post was later deleted, possibly due to pressure from the representatives of the red bus drivers in Chiang Mai, urging her to protect their, their reputation. However, the pictures and the videos were widely shared by Thai news agencies. In an interview with Thai Roth, Sri provided further details of the incident. She explained that she had she and her friend wanted to go to Kong Market in the city center of Chiang Mai, so they waited for a bot bus. I'm gonna just tell you guys a story. So basically, they got into the bus, the bus went to the market. Along the way, the guy stopped, gave the money back to the Thai people saying, get off, I'm gonna pick up these, you know, foreigners. But the foreigners, seeing what happened, they didn't appreciate it, they didn't get into the bus. And then the guy's like, okay, come on back into the bus to the locals. The woman, they took out their phone, took a video and a picture of the incident. The one popular trend right now in Thailand is anytime somebody does something bad, people are pulling out their phone and recording it, and I'm a big supporter of that. If you get scammed, if you get bullied, if you get harassed, if you want unwanted attention, pull out your phone in Thailand and start recording them because right away, Thai people, as we know, or we should know by now if you watch anything about Asia or Thailand, or if you don't know, they, they don't like losing face. Thai people hate being embarrassed in public, basically, and essentially. So when you pull out your phone, usually the, the situation drastically de-escalates, right? Or because of fear of being on camera, of being shown to the public, of them doing something wrong. Of course, there might be a slight chance of them actually being more aggressive, but if they're on camera, the chances definitely reduce. So I will still take my chances by pulling out my camera and making sure I record whenever there's some kind of dispute of any kind. So you may have noticed I covered some more countries as requested by some viewers. You know, this channel, not just for me, it's for you guys as well. I want you to stay up to date, but there's just too many countries in Asia to actually follow properly. It's just me, one man. I have a handful of sources I follow. And the reason why I covered Thailand and the Philippines is because those are two countries I'm in the most and I have personal experiences. So I think I know a little bit more about those countries and I can probably speak on them a bit more than some other Asian countries. And now it's time for a segment yesterday today where I read some of the most popular comments. DV8 says, hey brother, appreciate your coverage of these stories. Thank you. And Charlie Chowman says, for overstaying expats on a budget, I hear the UK is offering permanent free long-term visa inclusive of bed, breakfast, free phone with monthly cash of 300 uh, pounds. For the Russian, he might want to also try the Kursk Frontline. Apparently, there's some free housing there too. That brings us to the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed it and are new to the channel or haven't had a chance to subscribe, we're making our way to 5,000 subscribers. And by we, I mean myself and you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share this video. Write your comments about any of the stories I covered today. If you take your time to write it, I'll take your time to respond. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Today, the emergency committee met and advised me that in its view,
the situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. I have accepted that advice. Very interesting. And lastly, in Russia, the Behan. Behan.